Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 208. Mike Sorg here at Sorgatron on the Twitters from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And if this is your first time, uh, some of the time, uh, first time caller, uh, you, this is where we talk technology, this is where we talk geeky things. Uh, and this week I got a good friend joining us, Will Rutherford, sometimes known as Papa Lunchbox on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And another venture we're going to talk about here uh, after the uh, something awesome, something comic booky. I'm excited to talk about that there, Will. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm on Awesome Cast. <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, you can join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can join us in the chat room like the awesome people. Like, hey, Intern Mike's here helping us with the tweets and the ones and twos. And uh, Hot Wheels, Chachi, uh, and of course, Brother Sorg as well. And he's got an article there. We're going to see see what that's about too, maybe here later in the show as well. Uh, so, uh, and you can also check us out. We're at uh, awesomecast.com, all the shows at sorgatronmedia.com as well. Um, and you can also hit us up on social media at awesomecast on Twitter. Uh, we're on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, Facebook, Google Plus, anywhere you want to follow us in audio, video, and textual forms. Or drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, so, LB, uh, let's talk awesome things of the week. What do you got lined up, sir? Uh, well, um, Sorg, uh, uh, I, I have an Apple TV in my home. Let's start with that. Let's start with that basic okay, piece okay. of information. Wait, is it is it a newer one? Is it the older one? Like like, like... It's, it is unfortunately it's a newer one. It's okay. a three. It's the three, three model. Okay, uh, which I can't really complain about. You know, no. it's fine. Um, I originally got it because I wanted to um, uh, uh, do whatever. I wanted to put uh, XBMC on it, but you can't do that on the three. You can only do it on the two due to oh. jailbreaking. Anyway, none of that is important. The important thing is it's great. It has the best streaming quality out of anything else I have streaming in my home. Nice. Um, it's uh, it's better than the PS3 that I use to stream my local media, and uh, it's uh, far and away better than the Xbox that I used to use. Anyway, um, there was one complaint that I had about it, and that was that uh, the Netflix app did not automatically play the next episode when I was watching a TV series. Mm -hmm. No longer. No longer. They have rolled it out. Uh, Apple TV now autoplays the next episode of whatever you're watching on Netflix. It's a simple little change, uh, and it's only, in fact, awesome to people with Apple TVs. Uh, but I have an Apple TV, <laughs> and it is awesome. You know, I've enjoyed this. Um, uh, generally on the Xbox uh, was where we used to watch our Netflix primarily uh, previously. Now we're on Chromecast. so But now it's, you know, we still have to go in the app and pick the next thing, right? And we can at least, mm -hmm. like, cue that up while we're waiting for the show to finish. You know, we can see how many minutes are left. So it's kind of nice for that. But it still is kind of a pain in the butt. You know, I know we're watching a lot of stuff. I just went through the Avengers series. Uh, uh, Missy and I just picked up Mixology, which is apparently this weird one season thing that got canceled last year. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's actually kind of a, a fun couple watch. So, uh, but, uh, especially like, uh, the, the Apple TVs seem to be just behind on most features too. Like they get celebrated when they're like, we got a new channel, PBS is here or baseball or something like that. Right. Uh, versus Roku when it's like how many hundreds of channels are over there. That's true. Yeah. So. Um, and the other the other thing with uh, the auto advance being great is because before, if you're watching a, a, an episode, you have to, when you finish the episode, 
back out of that episode and then back out all the way into that season and then back in and it was like two or three clicks to get to the next episode it's great that they've streamlined it nice nice perfect i love that this article that you have here over on engadget um if we can tweet this video out uh on on the twitters guys uh but it's the battlestar galactica skit from portlandia yes that is correct which which i i got to watch recently and uh it's completely uh it, it, it yeah, it's 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 just completely how it feels when you have Netflix mm-hmm. and you're and you're binge watching something. What? That's the last one. Uh, also, a friend of the show, John Carmen, will be very ha- happy that we're tweeting that out. He has been trying very hard to get me to watch Battlestar Galactica, up to and including uh, telling me that John Hodgman appears on an episode, who is, uh, of course, my favorite uh, comedic author. And uh, I can't tell if he's lying or not. I think he might. Be. I don't remember John Hodgman, but it was uh, it was a lot of episodes. So I he don't said know. he was dissecting a Cylon, which oh, I mean, I could see that. I could see. Apparently, that. there are Cylons. There are Cylons. So yes, I guess yes. that's we should have said spoiler alert right there. Oh, and everybody could be one. And Everyone could be you one. Can, you can check us out after the show to see. Which ones those are? Anyways, I have a spoiler alert button, but it's on the other show. So, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, all right. Uh, well, hey, you know, I went to open Coffee Club at Alpha Lab as I as I have been kind of lately, uh, and it's the new cycle. Uh, we talked, uh, you know, and recently on the show, we've talked with a few of the companies that are uh, mid or ending cycle with the uh, Alpha Lab gear. Uh, always keep an eye on them to see what news coming out of here in Pittsburgh. Um, and so there was a big. All right, well, they, they, they have a big announcement of uh, just what companies are are coming out. Uh, Data Squid, who I think got renamed. I think I saw their 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 door crossed out with a new name under it when I visited. Uh, sit with uh, uh, research we easily. I can't read that other logo there. Uh, but I went <laughs> to Coffee Club. It, it, you know, my only my only complaint about Coffee Club, like it, it's, it's just. Just a little bit of organization nitpick. I go in there and I don't know who the companies are, like the people with the companies. You just there and it's a room and nobody's in their like actual office kind of space. No name tags, you know. So I'm just like I'm just going to start talking to random people. Thankfully, I happen to run into the one company that I think I'm actually interested in this cycle, and, and we'll see what the other ones. I'm not really terribly familiar with the rest of them. And LB, I think I sent you this site too because I know you're, you know, like we said, when you're starting a podcast, this might be something that that could be very helpful to you. Sorg, another spoiler for later in this very show. Oh well, I mean, you're always working on stuff, man. This is like, <laughs> you know, you always work on something audio, you know. That's true, and it's true. It's true. It's uh, it uh, it w- it will become something that will be uh, very useful to me in the future. Um, basically, the way he he described it, and I'll pull up the site here, and I, and it's not going to look quite as good as when he actually had a project in here. Uh, but basically, what they're trying to do is um, like a Google Drive for audio. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. So. You can record in this application. It's in the browser. He actually, if my browser updates here, there we go. Um, you record in the browser. I'll see if I can just like record a track here, maybe. Uh, my mouse is gone. Page it says allow for record. Okay, we're going to allow the microphone to be used. And we're going to hit record. Maybe. It tells me I need to allow something. I don't understand what it needs me to allow. Allow. This is my first time using it on this one, but generally, as you go through here, it, it, it's your pretty basic multi-track editor, and and it, it definitely it seemed to be intention for like a multi-track, like I'm recording a song, parts to a song, a guitar, a drums, you know, something like that. But then it's up in the cloud. They've they've, they've uploaded everything on the back end. They're doing some kind of crazy compression thing, um, and in the end, then you have it. Everybody can share the project and go in, put their part in, do some editing. Um, you know, ideally, I'll be. You know, if say you're working on some podcast, which you may or may not be doing, um, and you're like, <laughs> "Hey, I'm having some trouble with uh, this thing," or "Or what do you think we should do with this this segment on here, or something like that?" I can log in and make some tweaks for you, or record something and stick it in there on mm-hmm. my own. I think it's going to be super powerful. Um, again, I was talking with the guy along with a, a kid that's actually going to the pit, and he's a he's a music actually a rapper. How about that? Oh, dear. Um, yes. Nothing uh, but trouble. Also going for psychology. 
So put that together. Ooh, uh, extra nothing but trouble. So you can tell, like, he was definitely, uh, the, the, the Nebulous uh, guy was definitely, like, picking our brains, like, what would you like to see in here? Like, would you like to see filters and stuff? Like, I'm like, I'm like man, I'm a podcaster. You know, if you, as long as you give me a compressor, uh, a normalizer, a uh, noise reduce kind of stuff, I'm, I'm good. You know, just some stuff to clean up. You got the multi-track stuff going on. Um, there's definitely, there's definitely some missing features with this thing so far. But talking to the guy, uh, he said the technology to do what they're doing with this program wasn't around two months ago. Mm. As impressive that they're this far yeah. along, uh, as far as that goes. So if you want to check it out, it's over at uh, nebulous.io. N-e-b-u-l-u-s dot i-o. Interesting seeing these dot ios pop up all over the place. I, I know I, I follow forecast.io. Uh, that it's like a, a web app for my weather mm-hmm. on my phone. So, uh, so go check that out and we'll be tweaking with that. I, I know he was, I did ask like how long a files, like, can we put like an hour podcast in there? He's like, we don't know yet. <laughs> so let's see what we can do. LB. let's see if we can break this thing, but it'll be nice. Cause then you can, uh, you know, you know, have a part and say, Hey, this thing doesn't work, you know, and, and hopefully they fix it and you're a part of that process. So, um, and, and, and in a lot of the talk, a lot of kind of blue skying talking to the guy, talking to the guy was like, you know, hey, um, you know, we, we'd love to do this for video down the line. And I think that would be that would be awesome. That would be amazing for, to collab for that. So you can collab kind of with like Final Cut, but it's very tricky to me be like, uh, you know, sharing those projects and making sure all the parts like we we put projects in um, uh, Google Drive and uh, it's just like not with other full on editors per se, um, but it does get a little sketchy and kind of hairy every once in a while. Uh, maybe like mm-hmm. a certain file doesn't like sync up right, and then your versions are all off, and then it's just broken because it's all databases, right? Uh, you know, just just holding all those pieces of video together. Uh, so, uh, but but no, I definitely like to see like a, a web version of something like a Final Cut or, uh, come up, and and as things get more powerful and we have all this bandwidth. Um, you know, I can definitely see that happening. I did get the 411 real quick on some of the uh, other uh, uh, the other uh, companies going in here. I thought it was really interesting because there was one that was... I think they changed the name. I can't remember which one it is. I think it's this Covey one. It's uh, like there's a location-based mobile app for moms to connect with other moms for playdate p- planning. And then there was huh. another app that seemed similar, but for... Um, Say you've moved to a city and you don't have any friends and you need a reason to force yourself to get out, network, make new friends. Like, it's that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, and I'm like, well, those two really sound familiar, don't they? <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've, I mean, I just recently read an article. I can't remember where it was. So, uh, sorry. Um, but it was about, you know, making friends uh, as an adult versus making friends when you're younger and how much harder it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's, I think that's awesome that to facilitate that. And the two apps, uh, Covey and sit with are the two apps that I'm, uh, speaking of. And of course, if you go to alpha you can check out, uh, all the new companies. Uh, some of them may or may not have, uh, you know, a lot of information up for them. Some of them just kind of have placeholder pages sometimes at this stage. I haven't gone through all of these to check them out. I really just know from what I talked with these guys and check it out. Nebulous a little bit. Um, other than that, there's some, uh, uh data visual- visualization with data squid research. We is supposed to be pretty interesting. Again, kind of a data and, uh, analysis this kind of thing easily uh is actually a company that makes art uh accessible uh that they're if you make something uh i think it connects you to the people that'll like make you you know help you be able to sell prints online right which doesn't seem like a new concept to me too uh but we'll we'll see what their angle is on something like this Mm -hmm. So, uh, but no, go check it out. Alphalab.org, nebulous.io. And, uh, you know, we always kind of keep an ear out for, uh, you know, these kind of local tech companies. So uh, stay tuned here for that kind of stuff. So with that, it's weird having only two of us to do something like this. I see you have a question mark app of the week. Is This is you that did this, right? Uh, Yes. Yes, that was me that did that. Uh, what did I, put? <laughs> I couldn't. I didn't know if it was left over from last week and we didn't get to it or not. Oh no, that was uh, that was me, and I actually have two uh, two apps there. I was hoping you would narrow it. Um, well, we can talk about Comic Zeal. I'm actually not updated on. I haven't used Comic Zeal for a good bit, but Comic Zeal is the application that got me back into comics. Excellent. So, uh, has it 
I, I remember it was nice because if you had like f- for me, I I had purchased a few DVDs, CDs of like you could get like here's the first four hundred issues of X Men, Uncanny mm-hmm. X Men, and but they're like obviously scanned PDFs. They're not nice and like the digital yo know, whatnot that like marvel unlimited and, and comiXology use it was like right. we took these issues we completely opened them up put them on a scanner page by page all the ads are in this thing here you go uh we zipped them up on pdfs and they're on a dvd uh, you know on a, they're on a cd dvd you paid whatever you know 30 bucks for something like this. this is legit like this was apparently an official licensed thing and if you look on amazon for some of these they're really really high dollar to try to get these anymore uh, so i had good legitimate pds but i didn't have i hated reading them on a on a on a laptop or anything like that and this was like the perfect thing when i got an ipad hell when i had my phone i was you know fussing around and, and moving around with it now you have a, you have some extensive knowledge with this uh, app too right yeah it's it's my favorite uh comics reading app um i use it on my phone i also use it on my ipad i've got an ipad mini and it is just beautiful i uh, the interface makes sense it's crisp it's fast um and i and i love it and i i absolutely recommend it It does cost a little bit of money i don't know let's take a quick look and see how much it costs i think i've paid like four bucks for this back in the day um the thing is i think it's different depending on whether you get it for your phone Mm -hmm. or whether you get it for the ipad Mm -hmm. um yeah, they have Comic Zeal Reader Mini. This is by uh, Bitolithic, and uh, the Mini is a dollar ninety nine. I think that's specifically for the uh, for the phone, and then um, the full reader is four ninety nine. But trust me when I tell you that it is four ninety nine. Absolutely, absolutely well spent. Mm-hmm. Um, the way it navigates is great. Everything is smooth. You can organize your uh, your files into libraries. Um, for uh, you know, ease of access on your device, it's great. It's great. I uh, I love it, and it, I absolutely recommend it. Um, and it also, it, tell me if they still do this, but I remember when I first got, it, they actually had a link to um, public domain comic books that you could get. I think that might still be true, mm-hmm. but to be honest, uh, I'm actually uploading some new comics to the app as we speak. Nice. So I can't check. <laughs> nice, nice. I, sh- I should redownload it and go uh, check in on it. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I, of course, you know, it kind of you know, Marvel Unlimited kind of killed needing it on on my end. Um, That's true. I haven't made the jump to Marvel Unlimited yet because uh, I don't get paid that much money <laughs> <laughs> hey it beats it definitely beats going to uh, single issues you know what i mean for for what you would pay for like two and a half issues you get you get that whole thing wait six everything six months old but i'm patient you know <laughs> i mean i know thor is going to be a girl in a few months in advance whatever so does everybody else you know whatever we'll see anyways um, I, you also had here Time Hop. I know Bobby's been using that a lot. Yeah, I've been using Time Hop for a while, and I love it. The I, uh, the principle behind Time Hop is uh, you input your information, your Facebook and your Twitter, and I think there's a couple others you can add. Um, but uh, and and then what it'll do is it will pull tweets from one year ago. Um, and photos from one year ago exactly on that day, and it gives you daily. Uh, updates of what you tweeted, photos you took, and things you up- uploaded to Facebook one year ago, and it's great. It's amazing. Some I, I love going back and looking at um, things that I sent out a year ago and thinking, "What? How did I even come up with that? That's brilliant." You know what I mean? <laughs> let's let's take a look right now because I just recently got the message that my time hop is ready. Let's see what I did uh, last year today. Um, doop doop do. Let's see here. There's a tweet that says football, right, guys? <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. were, we, were we playing football? I don't know. Um, the Royal Baby will be catching up or will be late. Fuck. The Royal Baby will. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I'm okay, sorry. It's That's okay. Not, it's a different show. <laughs> the Royal Baby will be late as she is catching up on Downton Abbey. Kate's belly has a really great Wi-Fi. Um, there's a very inspirational picture of sun bursting from behind a clouds. And it says, ladies is pimps too, Jay-Z. Um, do, 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 
do you, one bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's Sweet and Spicy Barbecue Sauce, one can of Coke, one bag of frozen chicken breasts, and a wee bit of sriracha. That is a slow cooker recipe for pulled, uh, uh, like, shredded chicken. And uh, that's that's my gift to your awesome listeners. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, I was on Time Hop apparently before it was cool. Um I, I, you know, probably a year ago, and, and, and there was this, and there was another service that did this too. And they'll be like, mm-hmm. "This is what you did four years ago." I'm like, "Well, okay, you know." Uh, <laughs> and after a while, just like, eh, "I don't really care." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but oh, but, they also have um, uh, uh, things that happen that aren't related to your timeline, uh, like this news from two thousand and two, twelve years ago today. "Hot in Her" by Nelly was the number one song in the U.S. Good it's to true. know. It's very know. true. Apparently, four, uh, four years ago, I went camping. There's there's a picture of me camping. Is that nice? <laughs> no, can't see it. <laughs> no, can't no. see it. Can't see it. No, that's good. But yeah, I I am uh, re-downloading this. I'm going to try Time Hop again. See uh see how much has changed. I mean, it, it definitely looks different uh from mm-hmm. from what I'm seeing here. It's more cartoony. It and there's like, the there's the pleasing. little there's the little mascot who's always very supportive and jealous of your day. And I don't remember his name. <laughs> you remember his name? No, I don't. <laughs> um, this uh, today he says mankind's greatest achievements the wheel fire the zipper moon landing chapstick will's day so he might you know have, might be a little hyperbole there but anyway it's fun it's fun yeah good good all right let me tell you else what else is fun uh we got an awesome sponsor slice on broadway i know you're familiar with their lp uh oh man it's some good stuff. Uh, it they, they help us out for our in-studio guests throughout the night, uh, helping to keep them fed, keep us fed, so we don't starve uh, in our podcasting ways. Um, so go check them out, SliceOnBroadway.com. They got a new location going on at uh, in Carnegie that should be opening soon if they haven't yet. I haven't heard word from it in a while. We got I got to get down there and talk to the guys to see what's going on with it. Uh, but go, please check them out. Support the guys that support this podcast. They're so great. Uh, <laughs> uh, Missy went to pick up the pizza, and and apparently there's somebody new that didn't know that we have the sponsorship thing. And three people like stepped up, was like, nope, 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 nope. It's, it's theirs. It's theirs. You know. <laughs> uh, so it, they they're really enthusiastic apparently about supporting us, and we really appreciate it here on the Sorgatron Music Tri- Sorgatron Media. Network. Uh, so good. check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, they're also on Twitter, Facebook. So please like them, follow them uh, wherever uh, you find them. And uh, tell them you heard about them here on the Awesome Cast and check them out if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. Twitter is pgh underscore slice. So right now, all you guys watching right now, say, hey, heard about you on the Awesome Cast. Sup. And we'll see what happens. So, all right, LB, with that, uh, I think it's time for us to talk about uh, a certain project you got coming up here. Uh, so I, I got I got the, I got the preview. Let's get into it. I love it. I love this idea. Uh, I know we've been talking about this for a little bit, uh, and I'm glad to see it's, it's finally going to launch here this week. So what is happening? Hey, I'm glad to see it's finally going to launch, too. Um I am starting a new podcast. I've I've had this kicking around in my head for a long time, and I finally refined the refined the idea to the point where um, I feel I can execute it properly. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what it is is uh, it is a comic book based podcast. Um, something very near and dear to my heart. Uh, it, this, a lot of it spawned from conversations with you, and I realized I love comics just as much as I love wrestling. And as I say on the show, I've been doing a podcast about wrestling for eight years. And you know how long that is in podcasting terms? It's eight years. I'm excited to get things started. Uh, I've, been, I've been working on it for a couple of weeks now. And uh, starting tomorrow, uh, launching being released alongside uh, the other Sorgatron Media Network podcasts uh, will be episode 00, the origin story. It's a shorter episode. It's only about 12, 13 minutes. It's just me getting a feel for the software and the equipment, uh, getting a feel for the kind of format that I want to have for the show, um, and there's a few surprises in there. I got a commercial. That's right. Episode 00, and I already have a sponsor, quote-unquote, um, we've got a theme song. We already have an intern named Intern Stan. Um, it's uh, it's it's very exciting. On top of that, I've also launched 
um, a Tumblr page. I decided to go with Tumblr um, for the uh, for the website, at least at first, um, because it's free. I spend time on Tumblr anyway, so I can reblog comic book themed things, um, and I can uh, you know make my posts on there. Uh, oh, the X Men Arcade Six Person one! I've only seen that once at a Chuck E. Cheese. That's amazing. It is incredible. I uh, I used to play it at Kennywood all the time, and I desperately want it back. Um. So uh, where was I? Nope. Yes, Tumblr Tumblr page. That's the website. I got the dot com. So go uh, if you head on over to panelriot.com, you can spend at least a couple of hours just scrolling through random comic book stuff because I've been working. I've been keeping that updated for longer um, than uh, for, anyway, for a while. Uh, Twitter is also active uh, at panel riot exists. Um, really it's just anytime the Tumblr posts, it updates to the Twitter, but that'll change as we get more followers and more interaction, things like that. Um, yeah. And I am, I am super thrilled. We're going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of guests coming up because my knowledge of comics, while I'm passionate about that, about them I'm really a Marvel guy so um, I mean episode two I already have a guest lined up uh, Jack Bunja actually friend of the wrestling nice. mayhem show um, he's gonna come on and we're gonna talk about we're gonna have a civil discussion about the uh, the merits of Marvel versus DC um, <laughs> and uh, but before that episode number one um, after the origin story uh, we're gonna have Bobby FJ town friend of the wrestling mayhem show uh, and I'll just tell you that the title of that episode is The Beast That Must Be Fed. <laughs> so tune in and, and, and that should be fun. I love it. And you told me some of the other con concepts uh, in confidence. Uh, and uh, it mm -hmm. really sound I love the idea where it's not like just I'm going to talk about comics. I'm going to talk about what I think about comics. It's like I'm also going to learn about con comics. You know, exactly. It's yeah. like, like I, you're using it as a vehicle to like also expand your mind and opinion on it. Yeah, I want to learn more, and I also want to use this as an excuse to go back and read certain comics and certain story arcs that I didn't necessarily uh, look at as just a casual fan, you know what I mean? I, I want to do a whole episode about the new X-Men story arc that I've always avoided because it didn't seem like my cup of tea. But now, I have more of a reason to read it. It's not mm -hmm. just for pleasure, it's also for analysis, you know, things like that. <laughs> forces you into it just like this like we're like I, I should watch that wrestling show because i kind of do a podcast about that thing mm. exactly yeah mm. now as far as now this is a tech podcast mm -hmm. you know so i uh, briefly i can talk about the tech that i'm using um uh really it's 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 very similar i'm using the sorgatron media pattern uh anytime i have you know guests on i will bring them on through Google plus that's, and I'll get the audio from there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, it, I'm going to go through audacity to do all the audio editing and everything like that. So, so, so. when you say the, the Sorgatron media pattern, I, like this, it, it, it seems like it's more the, how we do our wrap ups and our, our after shows, right? No, I mean, I mean, well, well, my, Oh, my, you're doing the, a mix. You're doing a mix. Cause you're, you're doing your interviews that way and you're grabbing that. You well, like, you're not, you're not recording the audio live. You're letting it hang out capture that right right and then i'll okay. take the audio in edit it down add yeah, in commercials yeah. and everything like that um and i don't have uh, i don't have all the technology that you have there in the studio i don't have as many cameras i've got you know just the one camera here mm -hmm. and the computer that i built but um uh yeah i'll just grab the audio from there edit it down the other thing is i want to keep it short i want to do a short podcast most of the podcasts I listen to are very, very long. Mm -hmm. um, I listen to Comedy Bang Bang, which is often an hour and a half to two hours. I listen to The Wrestling Mayhem Show, which is an hour and a half to two hours. I want to keep this one short. I want to keep it tight. And I feel like um, that'll also encourage my guests to get to their point. You know what I mean? Uh, I want to keep it fast-paced and, uh, and tight, 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 tight. So 45 minutes is the max. We'll do two-parters if we have to. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's, the, that's the goal. We'll see how it pans out. And I noticed you're also using SoundCloud, I believe, right? Uh, yes. Uh, just at first, though, I'm, okay. I'm going to be hosting. I'm going to be hosting the audio at SoundCloud because uh, it's free, and uh, I don't want to make any financial investments into this podcast until no. until it becomes. I know it's going to become a regular thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Yeah. So, so managing, kind of managing that schedule, managing that expectations. That's the biggest thing I find with with podcasters. It's it's. Are you sure you're going to be able to do this? You're like, oh, I'll do a couple of them. We'll see how it goes. It's like, no, 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 no. Are you sure you're going to be able to do this every week and be able to turn something in every work? You just made a new job for yourself, you know, uh, yeah. if you really want it to go anywhere, I think. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's 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 also a, it's a creative outlet for me. Mm-hmm. I love, um, you know, figuring out what to say, going back in, uh, writing down, uh, like short little scripted segments for myself um, and the the audio editing. I haven't actually sat down and done any solid audio editing in probably years before this. Um, and I forgot how much I love doing it, getting in and just getting little tweaks and everything, just making it sound just right. And uh, I, I love doing that stuff. So Awesome. Awesome. Uh, really liking how the first one's uh, uh, sounding. I love that little Easter egg. I appreciate that at the end there. Um that you said to check out uh so uh, and i like and also we have a few others uh there might be somebody else some starting a new show under our banner as well uh mm-hmm. we'll just keep that under wraps until it happens uh <laughs> but uh you know we'll see we'll see uh, but i like this idea that we're expanding that you guys are actually taking it and we can actually kind of promote it amongst what we're doing with the other shows like this you know uh you know hopefully run a bumper you know next week after you've launched saying hey go check out panel right and, and at least like we can I feel like there's a lot of crossover audience, you know, and we can say, Hey, go check it out. You know, uh, yeah, I, so agree. I hope that helps you out. So, so go check it out. Right. Panelriot.com, And, uh, all your updates will be funneled through there. Yeah. So, Follow us on everywhere. Follow us everywhere <laughs> on the Twitters and, and everything like that. So I already got you followed. Um, awesome. So you want to talk, <laughs> something less than awesome. Uh, something that, um, um, I, I guess you, this has come across your wire. So I wasn't sure if you were, uh, uh, in tune with this, but I know, uh, it was on every tech podcast that I listened to this past week. Um, but uh, I believe Ryan Block and Veronica Belmont, uh, you, some may know him, uh, Ryan Block. Uh, I think they, they call him a VP at AOL. He's, uh, uh known best for, uh, uh, GDGT. Dot com and before that i think he is a big part of engadget in particular which is also an aol thing so he left aol made a thing and then sold it back to aol so he's smart he's smart uh veronica belmont also does um you see probably seen her on revision 3's techzilla for instance uh sword and laser which is on the geek and sundry channel under um uh redhead the guild i'm sorry uh felicia, felicia day. day thank you i don't know why i blanked on that uh <laughs> so they moved. They were going with something. Apparently, there's a cable system out there called Astound, which that's fun to begin with, right? And mm-hmm. they called to cancel their Comcast. And Oh, yes. And apparently, she was on first. And after 10 minutes, Ryan gets on and decides to record the conversation. Um I'm not going to play it. There's about 10 minutes of it. Uh, you can find it anywhere. Find any article that says, I have an Ars Technica one here, for instance. It says, call to cancel Comcast service descends into desperate hysterical fireworks. Apparently, this guy, their retention is so... Whatever is happening over there uh, with their call centers, this guy would not... This guy wanted to get a reason. Uh, to the point where he kept like, why, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you have the number one provider in, uh, in, in internet? Why, why wouldn't you have faster internet? Astound doesn't have any as fast as internet as ours. And, 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 and at this point, and of course, I'm sure this is after 10 minutes of frustration there gotten to this point. Uh, but he just said, I decline to answer. Can you just cancel my service? Can I decline to answer? Can you just cancel my service? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, well, why would you want to leave? So like, he's like, this is a fine example of why I want to leave you. <laughs> 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 and now I know that you, you said you've, uh, you've, you've caught uh, some of the stuff going on with us. What are your impressions of this? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. And yes, it is very cringe inducing, mm-hmm. but it's not, you can't blame the, uh, the customer service rep. You have to if the blame is going to fall on anybody, it's going to fall on uh, Comcast. Yes, because it's due to their uh, their policies why this guy is doing this. Because you know they get they get paid based on customer retention. You know what I mean? They have quotas they fill. They they have you know the guy's doing his job. You know, and he's not he's doing a job that he isn't paid particularly well for. And he's doing a job that he's mostly getting yelled at for, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and now he's doing a job that he's getting vil- or crucified all over the internet for. Um, <laughs> but like I say, it's not his, you can't put the blame on him. You have to right. put the blame on Comcast. Right. And, uh, the best way I can describe the whole thing is cringe inducing. Uh, even like Ryan Block after this, he, uh, you know, Comcast as they do engaged on, on social media, it seems. And he said, don't fire this guy, fix your system. Mm hmm. So I hope, I hope that's what happened. You know, and, you know, and I've had, I, I've left, um, uh, for instance, I left a uh, dish network and, uh, at the time I, I was like, and they're like, well, why are you leaving? I'm like, well, to me, you know, I have no problem with your service. And honestly, I'll probably come back someday. Uh, but for now, uh, you know, I'm, I have to go do this. I, well, I think at the time I got Fios. Like, I, Fios was available in my mm-hmm. area. And I wanted to get, you know, I'm like, these guys have a triple pack and I need the internet. So I'm, I'm going to have to go with these guys. But uh, but I love your service. I just, you know, I, I just can't use it right now. You know, and it was not a problem. You know, mm-hmm. uh, even Verizon, when I trimmed down to the internet from the triple play, it was mostly not a problem. I might have a little bill issue because of something they did, uh, mm-hmm. but it wasn't this, you know, it wasn't anybody saying, well, do you really want to do that? I'm like, yeah, I think I do. I, I think they did like maybe come back and say, well, for this much, we can give you everything. I'm like, and I just say, honestly, I don't watch TV, mm-hmm. you know, and, and which is true because I'm watching everything on the internet. I was like, I'm not watching your TV. Even like sometimes when I've called about maybe upgrading just the internet, they'll be like, Hey, for 10 bucks more, uh, you'll do this. Even when I called about, hey, why is my bill uh, eight bucks higher? Uh, there was something, some contract thing, and and I got upped. And it's just what happened, right? Um, and they're like, hey, like she was even honest and said, I can't even give you. I'm like, I can't really even offer you anything better that's going to be cheaper, even with TV or anything like that. I was like, well, thank you for being awesome with me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, Verizon, awesome customer service. Watch your ass when the bill comes because sometimes they don't put the deal through. Or something that's, like that. That's absolutely or, true. Or I find I have HBO and didn't know about it and was paying full price for it for several months, and now I'm in a contract I can't get out of. Mm-hmm. That happened to me, and I was really living on that kind of thing. Uh, I got stuck with Showtime for like a year because of something like that. Um, but other than that, customer service, any tech problems, they were fantastic. Um, but, you know, uh, other than that, yeah, this I can't remember having this problem when I left. But then again, I think I moved or something. So I think that was a little easier. So Yeah. I ran into something similar. I just recently switched from Clear mm-hmm. uh, for internet to Verizon. And, you know, they were they were the people for Clear were very nice, mm-hmm. but they did ask me three or four times, you know, but maybe don't you want to stay? And the thing <laughs> is they couldn't they couldn't offer me anything because I told them I it's faster internet. And they're like, okay. Well, it looks like you have our fastest internet, but maybe you want to stay with us. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't so. we been good to you? It's like a bad breakup or something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no, I mean, that will uh, clear for those who don't know. It's, I believe, not WiMAX, but it's like 4G. I don't know which technology they're using now, uh, but you basically have like an in-home wireless router, right? Uh, but yeah. but it was wireless. Wireless is only going to get so fast and so reliable. Definitely not great for this kind of thing with video and audio, right? <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I don't know. I, I, I'm glad that like this. You know, there's been talk about this may actually um, um, stir some stuff in legislation. Not the legislation, but it's some higher up mucky mucks that are making the uh, call on their merger with Time Time Warner Cable, for instance. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I love that. You know, we're the number one provider in, in America. I'm like, you're the only provider in most of America for once because you bought everybody else. You know, I think there's a difference there. Uh, and this shows exactly what exactly why. So, oh, something a little less depressing. Maybe this will be it. You got an article in here from Gizmodo. I do. Let me see. Where is that? Uh, what the hell was it? Dude. Uh, headline is Apple is ordering a huge 80 million iPhone 6 handsets for launch. Oh, yes. There it is. There it is. Yeah, this from the, the Wall Street Journal reports that uh, Apple is ordering 80 million iPhone 6 handsets. Mm-hmm. Uh, normally, they order, uh, where's that number? 51 million. Uh, I, let's see. No, I, that's not what they order. Uh, Apple's best ever quarter sales uh, are 51 million. Um, back over the winter of 2013. Hmm. 
So if they're ordering uh, like 70 to 80 million, then they are confident that everybody's going to want one. So, well, I think two things could be happening though. They, they have the ultimate Jesus phone coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, or uh, they notice a lot of people are due for their two year upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've, uh, I think I'm past the point of uh, considering going back to Android, considering mm-hmm. my last Android experience was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I've got, I've got an iPad mini that I am thrilled to death with. I've got an iPhone five currently that I like and I'm willing to upgrade. Awesome. awesome. So, so we'll see what happens. And, and of course, all the rumors are coming out about the, 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 the body and the glass and, and Sapphire and who knows what else and multiple mm-hmm. sized iPhones. Uh, here's something that I think you're going to love getting your head around. Uh, so ast- or NASA thinks that the moon's underground caves could house astronauts. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> so the idea is, uh, from what I was reading earlier on this thing, uh, these caves are just right that they don't get hot or cold uh, as drastically as the surface, for instance. Um, mm-hmm. They're not exposed to the radiation, and I think they actually said cosmic rays. Uh, so think Fantastic Four there. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, no radiation, no micrometeorites, uh, possibly very little dust, and no wild night-day temperature swings is a quote from Robert Wagner of the Arizona State University researchers who helped discover the holes. Um, if we're going to find aliens on the moon, they're going to be in the holes. They're going to be in the holes. That's if, if sci-fi has taught me anything, those holes are probably the belly of a giant worm. Yes. Exactly. Um, but no, that, that's that's interesting. So maybe that will be... So instead of these giant domes that we've always pictured uh, with Polly Shore, um, <laughs> so maybe they may just build them into these tunnels. So maybe that might be uh, uh, in the near future. So I like that. But let me ask, what would the benefit of that be? Well, I think we're already looking at the moon for mining possibilities and, and rare minerals. Okay. It's like, right. I think that, that is a legitimate reason and we want to go up there. I think there's something up there that, so, so, <laughs> so there'll be even more tunnels. And then the moon, I like what happens when you tunnel, like it's, it's one thing when we mine things on the plant on, on our planet that doesn't go mm-hmm. anywhere, but we mine things on another planet. Like at a certain point, does the planet get later and then not? stay in orbit as easily uh, well, like is I this feel an like issue we would have to do a, a very large amount of mining that's true um, and i don't really know dick about uh the moon but <laughs> uh it, i guess it depends on how, on what we would be mining how much of the moon is composed of those mm-hmm. um those uh minerals or gases or whatever it is we're going to be getting down there and also how we would be getting them back mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I think I hey, I think it's great. I think you know, go mine the moon. That's fine. It gets us back uh, interested in space exploration and having the funding to get that kind of thing done. You know what I mean? Mm. We're not explorers anymore. Um, so I guess nobody. It's it's like a family that used to go for rides for fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> and now they don't leave the house unless they got a reason. We used to send you know, we monkey. Fun- we used to send monkeys and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now we got a reason. We got, we got to go get groceries, and, uh, <laughs> you know, oil and stuff. I don't know. Awesome. So we'll see what's happening there. Of course, and then all the uh, privatization, you know, going on has been interesting. Oh yeah, I, I read something about uh, what? What's the name of the the private space? SpaceX. SpaceX. Yeah. Um, what they finally got their. Uh, their um, FAA, and I don't, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what's, right. what's it called? FAA um, certification. Certification. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, they um, so are allowed to. Wait. They're allowed to leave the atmosphere. <laughs> they're allowed <laughs> approval. Approval. SpaceX receives FAA approval. Okay, that's what it is. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, that'll yeah. be fun to see what happens there. Uh, pleasure trips to the moon could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to touch on this. Uh, and maybe this is a good update because I know you do some similar. We did talk about a little bit earlier of you with the Apple TV. Uh, but Doug's in the chat room and he's been he's had a couple of tweets throughout the night uh, that have been kind of fun while we were doing some of the other shows. 
Um, he's apparently cut the cord. At Good. first, he let me know that, uh, that apparently I will I will be um, providing the majority of his entertainment now in the house. So no pressure, LB. Uh, I'm glad we're doing such a good job with this show so far uh, <laughs> that he's joining us in the chat room. Uh, but he's been asking, like, wh- like you know, Netflix, obviously. I was talking to him about Hulu Plus. Uh, you know, what what is the must-haves? Probably a good time to kind of review. Go back to update. What are the good must-haves for a cord cutter these days as far as services? Mm, that's difficult. I mean, for us, obviously, uh, WWE Network's a thing because we're big wrestling fans. I'm sure his cu- his kids will love it. Yeah, WWE Network. Uh, that is that is absolutely fantastic. Like you said, Netflix and Hulu Plus. Um, although it depends on what you, if you want to keep current more Hulu Plus than Netflix, like with TV shows. Yes. But if you just want to like kick back, watch some movies uh, and some TV series, then Netflix is the way to go. I actually have Netflix and not Hulu Plus. So um, that's uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, it helps if you have a uh, friend or relative who does who has not cut the cord, uh, <laughs> and then you can uh, you can sometimes use their HBO Go password if you want to watch that. And actually, I um, let me pull this up here on. No, there's no reason you won't be able to see it on my iPad. I have the Comedy Central app. Nice. So and, and most of most of what I watch uh, current things are on Comedy Central. So I can watch Drunk History. I can watch Meltdown with Kumail and uh, 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 Jonah. Um, I can watch uh, Colbert Report, Daily Daily Show. You know, it's all there. So now I use I actually use Hulu for all the Comedy Central stuff that I want to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, because I had uh, started stripping some stuff down because I realized all I'm watching on Hulu right now is is Daily Show, Colbert at Midnight, and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. And over the summer, there's nothing new, right? Uh, yeah, there's some originals and stuff. And then, uh, and uh, I finally got to the point where I finally canceled my subscription today. I'm like, oh wait, all this stuff's on our website. I'll just pull up one of these random laptops and I'm good to go, right? I just can't watch it on my on my TV downstairs. But to be honest, I'm usually in my office watching this stuff, so there's not much advantage to it. Now I'll completely kick it back on as soon as all the fall previews uh, premieres come out, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, uh, I I don't use Hulu Plus. I just recently um, watched Bob's Burgers. I mean, mm-hmm. like binged Bob's Burgers, and uh, Netflix didn't have the most recent season. But lucky for me, I had a two week trial on Hulu, <laughs> and all I needed was a couple of days, and mm-hmm. I watched all mm-hmm. of um, all of Bob's Burgers. And I don't know what happened. I must have triggered some kind of algorithm because I got like four separate emails from Hulu saying. Here's a two week trial. Here's a two week trial. Oh, wow. It's like, <laughs> amazing. Well, and it's so, also, I mean, just hanging on to those for now. And also, like, you're a single dude. You got your computer right there. You can just watch Hulu right on there and stuff. But I think for him, like, you were talking about, he's got two kids, he's got a wife. Um, you know, you got to make sure the wife is not sitting there like, how do I watch TV? You know, um, not, I'm not saying that you're one that does that, but it's a consideration. No, that's exactly what everybody, most for other, home, for the listeners at home, my wife is here. Wife my wife is here on the, the couch, studio. yes. <laughs> um, but no, but that's usually a thing. I, I think we've had this conversation with Shelly. I've had this conversation with a lot of people. Are like, I would completely cut my cord, but I need to make sure I have a system that makes sense to the significant other. That maybe isn't techy, you know? Um, well, and, let, me, let me suggest this to you, Sorg. Mm-hmm. Because we live in a, we live in the future. We do live and, in the future, uh, and I love it. I ordered Chipotle on my phone. And it was right there when I got there. It was amazing. <laughs> now, okay, let's 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 uh, whip up a imaginary scenario for uh, for Mister Durda. Okay, so okay. he is in his. Uh, let's say he has a computer room. He's there in his computer room doing whatever on his computer, watching things. Okay, doing computer things. Doing computer things downstairs. Uh, He's got the kids, and the kids are watching TV, right? Mm-hmm. They're watching TV on some streaming device. In the living room is the wife, also on a streaming device, okay? Theoretically, without moving, without getting up from his computer, he can control all of it. I have, I have an Apple TV, and I, I, and I use the remote app on my Apple TV. That's mm-hmm. in the living room, okay? Mm-hmm. Um and I, I mean, I can control that from wherever as long as I'm connected on the same Wi-Fi. In the kitchen right now, I actually have a small television that's got a Chromecast plugged into it that I can also control from either my computer or my uh, my phone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's all when you're when everything is wired together like this. 
you have much more control than you would with just a simple uh, remote control and a cable box. Yep. Yep. And, and that's not, you know, not just that. I mean, you've got the Apple TV, you're talking Apple TV, you're talking Chromecast. Roku has an app that does something similar. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you know, if you're like, well, I don't want to pay for Hulu and stuff, I got the over air stuff. That's what I mostly watch. Then you can get certain versions of TiVos, simple TVs, things like that, that will do the DVR function with your over the air. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's also an option. Sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes I don't think it makes sense though, because you're, you're, you have less channels, you have less access versus Hulu has more than just the network TV stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But you still have to pay a service fee and you had to pay for the hardware. And a lot of times that's more expensive. Sometimes that's, almost equal to or more expensive than just get let's just get hulu plus you know mm-hmm. uh people have problems with hulu plus having commercials well how much were you paying for cable yeah that's how my much, that's my response there you, and and yes it's it's you get a little bit more access to more of certain seasons you get it on your tv and devices that's the biggest mm-hmm. thing you have it more than just a browser right um Anything that's not on there, I just supplant with uh, Amazon Prime, or if you're, you know, if you have an Apple TV, use use uh, iTunes, Google Play. Episodes are on everything else. Uh, mm-hmm. We we had probably at one time maybe three shows that we were just subscribed to on Amazon. I'm like, oh, hey, it's on. Let's go watch uh, Agents of Shield, or uh, actually, we subscribed to Agents of Shield before we realized it was on Hulu. So, oops, <laughs> oops. Uh, we didn't get commercials. Whatever. Um, or uh, I, I, Walking Dead, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. I'd also like to point out uh, in terms of uh, ease of control and access and everything like that, uh, I, I mentioned Apple TV and Chromecast, but if you have a Kindle Fire TV, mm-hmm. it's voice activated. Mm-hmm. Gary Busey can operate it, and he's literally, literally missing a part of his brain. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure it's, a, it's probably really easy to work. I'm sure. Yeah, and there's all kinds of options uh, going on all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, there's plenty of other services, too. Uh, You could be, I mean, they got, the sports is the only issue, really. Um, But you could say this, but um, usually, I think every major league has, has a, 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 you know, a massive plan, right? Even I think so, yeah. if you are unable to get a direct TV for whatever reason, or Madden, Madden does that deal again, um, they will actually let you have the web streaming subscription to NFL Sunday ticket. Um, you have to look at the details for that. Do you qualify? Are you like, am I in an apartment? I can't put a dish up, for instance, um, mm-hmm. or or something of the sort. I'm in a rental property. I can't put a dish on the side of the house. Uh, if you got, a, I think if you got a good enough excuse, they'll they'll let you do that. You still have to pay for it, but you know, um, mm-hmm. and, and anything else. If I'm sure, you know, local blackouts still apply. Uh, I can't get MLB TV and expect I'm going to get every Pirates game, from what I understand, or Penguins game with with, game, with center ice, right? Or game right, center, right. or whatever they call it. Um, mm-hmm. But you can definitely use certain things to get around that. Um, yeah. The other option is uh, just stop watching sports. <laughs> it's an addiction you should be stopping anyways. Go read a book. Yes. Try pro wrestling. Try pro wrestling. There's many fine books about professional wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Try pro wrestling books. It's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> What's that? Picture books? Here's some picture books. Hey, yeah, tell one. Missy to use her microphone voice. No, she's not on the microphone. She keeps, well, she's in the want... studio audience. Well, give her a microphone. I, she doesn't know because she's not on the show right now. Yeah, she is. Oh, she is now. <laughs> she's, she's talking. She's, yeah, she is. I guess so. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hey, uh, speaking of movies, videos, stuff like that, I want to give a shout out. They're actually already made their final push. Uh, uh, Jeez, what is this, about a year and a half ago or so? Uh, I had the opportunity to, to take a tour of uh, Hollywood Theater here in Dormont. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar. It's where we did our 400th episode, actually, for the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, awesome old theater. I'm so glad that they've, they've they brought it back and they're doing stuff with it since, since I've been here. They've done a kick, they've been doing a campaign for the longest time. I think they needed, oh, something like $75,000 to update to a digital projector because well, you, didn't, you didn't actually say who it is. Hollywood Theater? Hollywood Theater. In yeah. Dormont. In Dormont. Um, but they need to upgrade to a digital projector so they can still carry certain movies. Because some movies you can't use on DVD legally for public 
display. Um, uh, some movies, well, it's hard to find film. For instance, uh, finding a good print of Rocky Horror Picture Show, which is one of their best things where they have the JCCs come down and they do the the, the acting out and everything like that. You know, um, if you've heard about how live performance to the movies of Rocky Horror, Horror Picture Show is, this is what they do down there. And that's a big thing, right, for, for a theater like this that needs to bring people in, you know, any, how, any way they can can to stay going, right? Uh, so that was a big hang up for them. So they've been, uh, doing this, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing this campaign for a while now. They've had a few different fundraisers. They've had, I think a whole, uh, night of the living dead original print, uh, with, I think one of the, one of the actors was there, um, uh, uh, you know, in the meantime, they did a final Kickstarter for the last $7,500 of, uh, what they needed. And they did meet their, meet their goal. Um, they're at 83.50 of their $7,500 goal with seven days to go of the time, as of the time of this recording here on Tuesday, the 22nd of July. Uh, so go check that out. Kickstarter. Um, we've been retweeting it. Uh, it's the Hollywood theater. Go digital final push. If you uh, plug that in, it should come right up. Or if you go to, I believe it's Hollywood theater, dormant.com is their website. Uh, if I got that right. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The Hollywood dormant.org is actually mm-hmm. the website. So go check that you out and eat- support them. You know where I heard about this? Uh, the first place I heard about this? Hmm. Uh, future, uh, wait, no, which uh, was Community. Yeah, uh, actress from Community and future wife of Lunchbox, Gillian Jacobs, actually tweeted about it because she's local. Nice. Uh, she's from Pittsburgh, and uh, she linked to the Kickstarter page, and this was on the 19th, I think? Yeah, July 19th, and uh, she really helped help them get that final goal. Good. So, Awesome. I, it's good to see that. And they've, they've had uh, some pretty big things happen there. Um, they actually were featured. I think the part of the theater was featured. Um, I can't. Re- God, I'm so sorry. I can't remember the name of the movie. They have they, they have. It's like something wallflowers or something. Right. Uh, that green poster that's that's in there in their in their lobby. Wow. Um, the perks of being a wallflower. Perks of wall, being a wallflower. That was uh, filmed a lot here in in uh, Pittsburgh, and I think partially at the Hollywood as well, and premiered at the Hollywood. Um, yeah, that so. was um, uh, Hermione. What's her real name? Oh yeah, okay. No, the, no, she's always Hermione to me. Oh, all right. <laughs> What's that? Melody Granger from the audience. Um, this is the wrong uh, now show I have for to that. find out. No, uh, Hermione Granger was Hermione's last name. Was yeah. Oh. Mighty Granger. Mighty Granger. Anyways, but something Emma really Watson. Cool. Emma Watson. Emma Watson. Wow. We got stuck on that one. Uh, so there is some local stuff. Google will stop calling games free when they offer in, in-game or in-app purchases. Uh, Chachi will pay attention to this for his Mobile Monday reviews on insertcointobegin.com, I'm sure. Um, this is an EU, uh, uh, European Union uh passing legal case something like that and we've talked about you know uh, uh, uh kids that racked up hundreds of dollars of smurf berries on their i on their iphones uh you know stuff like that right uh mm-hmm. so they went to court uh, apple also needs to comply uh google's just the first one to uh kind of hop in on it uh, apple already has actually uh made changes so it's a little harder to buy those smurf berries if you're a little little kid <laughs> so for instance parents make sure you have your parental protections implemented on whatever i device you hand your kid or if they're going to pick it up i've i've counseled many a co-worker on how to turn off in-app purchases nice yeah nice it's education is the real saver here so <laughs> but no that's good i mean because how many you're like oh i'm going to get the free games and it's like oh you should do this thing and you know i've, I've played a couple of these where it's like wait a minute like where i wasn't sure if this was really a purchase or not Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, and, and then I don't buy anything in the game. Yeah, <laughs> even though there is like their own in-game currency that you're, you know, you're you're gaining coins or something like that, or stars or whatever it may be, or candy crushes and stuff like that. Hey, I don't want to hear it because you've actually spent money on that game. <laughs> a lot of money. Um, there's a there's a game uh, recently that uh, 
has been has switched over to the pay-to-play model that really drives me bonkers uh it's this game called sword and poker um and i, I played the first two list. yeah 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 that popped I up on the... uh, angry birds epic when i was playing it actually it's awesome it's the first two are magnificent games and the third one is just pay-to-play nonsense oh it's 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 infuriating because the first two are brilliant, entertaining, engaging little mobile games, and then you get to the third one, and it's just, it's not even just a matter of you know there's mm-hmm. the energy bar, mm-hmm. and you can pay to have infinite energy, but the still you there's a million other in-app purchases that have you have to buy just to make the game beatable, Playable. you know, just to progress. Uh, you know what? Uh, what bothered me is that they retrofitted all the Angry Birds games with pay- with freemium stuff. Even mm-hmm. ones that you paid for, like back in the day, now have well, free. Da, 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 da. I'm sure that you can probably get them free now. But uh, or yeah. the 99 cents, like I actually paid for the Star Wars Angry Birds, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. That puts me off a little bit. But I was like, I'm just gonna play without it. Like, like there, there's a certain part of me that's like, I just want my pure Angry Birds. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, I play the uh, the Simpsons tapped out game, and I've never oh. spent a dime on it. No, there you go, there you go, Bob. Are you, is that you that was mad that uh, I have this little house? Yes, yes, that was me, Sorg. Yes. Because you have one house and two characters, and it just mocks I, me. It just sits there and mocks me because I, I go to your town a, and there's one house and I can't I do anything. I started with it. an account, and with like like a minute, I was like, this is not a game I want to play. Listen, period. listen, listen. You at least at least have to have three structures, Sork. Three. I can do three things in your town. I learned. Wait, wait. What does that mean? It's like, can you do something to my town I if can, that happens? I can tap if I I can tap on your building, and it'll give me money and friendship points. All right, I want to do this for you, man. Okay, I just need you. Just need to play the storyline a little bit more. You. Build the quickie mart, and I think the Flanders right, whoa, house. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't get carried away. You forgot your password, didn't you? What? No, it's my origin password. <laughs> um, that's one of like three passwords. I'm sure. <laughs> Figure it out. No, actually, I'm I'm looking for it in the thing. No, it hasn't even been installed. Come on, man. Um, oh. But it is now, and this might be trouble. Um, uh, by the way, by the way, I'm on. Any listeners out there who uh, play The Simpsons Tapped Out? I'm DJ. Wait, what am I? <laughs> I think it's DJ Lunchbox Thirty Seven. I think that's me on. Um, I'm I'm Sorgatron everywhere. If you think I could be on a game, just look up Sorgatron and, and you'll find me. Let's be honest. Um, yeah, I'm, the, I'm the guy with the picture of Bill Cosby. You'll know it when you see it. Yeah, like who's it? Bill Cosby's playing this game. Nope, that's LB. Not Bill Cosby. <sighs> oh, no, no, LB, it's been fun. It's been a blast. Yes, I get to talk to you about delightful. Can I get to talk to you about wrestling later? Yes, it's very excited, great. folks. If you're watching now, stick around. Because the Wrestling Mayhem show is coming up in a few short hours. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, days after we've recorded it, go to panelriot.com, listen to that podcast. And then subscribe to WrestlingMayhemShow.com, the finest and best wrestling podcast anywhere on the internet. You will not be disappointed. Don't let your kids listen to it. Bobby F. J. Town says to add him, uh, then he should have six houses. Um, Okay. (laughs) Sure. Uh, just a, a catch up real quick. He's forced their mad because apparently they're going to talk about the Google uh, app thing in the boss battle. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know Chachi said he's up getting to a uh, iPhone six uh, when he's up his work phone, of course. So keeping keeping a toe in both worlds. I like that. Um, awesome. And uh, hey, hey, real quick, uh, Dutters not here this week. I actually <laughs> spent a lot of time with Dutters this week going to the Gathering of the Juggalos. Watch my stream, my Twitter, all that kind of stuff. You guys know I've been, uh, some of you know that I've been doing a daily podcast Tuesday through Friday. Um, I will continue it on the road. I can't promise it's going to be up at 8 a.m., but I will be doing it on the road whenever I wake up because these events go until 4 in the morning. So... I have to adjust for that. It's like going to it's like going to a juggalo time zone, apparently. Uh, so look for that. My impressions uh, going on there. Watch my Twitter stream. I bought a giant battery pack so I can tweet out this place. This campground has Wi-Fi apparently. Uh, mm-hmm. So this will be very very interesting. Going with uh, uh, two people who have never experienced the ICP before, uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But hey, uh, she was featured over on the Scarehouse YouTube. It just came up yesterday. Uh, she gives her exclusive, exclusive pre- preview of the upcoming haunts 
at the scarehouse. So go to uh, youtube.com, I believe just slash scarehouse or scarehouse.com, the scarehouse.com, and uh, go check that out. Uh, so uh, getting featured there yet again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, LB, he's at DJ yes, Lunchbox. He's at Panel. You can find me panel Riot. so many places. So many places. My normal Twitter's at DJ Lunchbox. I got another Twitter uh, at the Papa Lunchbox. That happens sometimes. Uh, follow at Panel Riot because that's what I am here to promote this week. Uh, go to panelriot.com, check it out, and uh, watch this space. Watch uh, coming up this Wednesday for Panel Riot episode zero zero. The origin, and we will plug that into the Sorgatron Media Everything feed. You can find that on, I believe, Stitcher and iTunes. If you're interested in that, it's the audio feed for that. Um, cool. And of course, you can check us out. We're recording live every, excuse me, Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6:30 p.m. Eastern Time. Twitter at AwesomeCast, uh, AwesomeCast on Facebook and Google Plus. So please follow Plus Us, Circle Us, whatever that is on all those. We're in video and audio formats on iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and Stitcher. Uh, big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping out with notes and tweets all night long. I think Missy might have been helping with a little bit of that too. We appreciate it since she's been hanging out. Uh, thank you to our awesome chat room, uh, Doug Chachi Wheels, Brother Sorg, Bobby F. J. Town for hanging with us all night long. Uh, I'm at Sorgatron. He's at the DJ Lunchbox. Thank you. You've been your awesome audience. You've been our awesome audience. <laughs> Have an awesome week.